Hi, everybody, and welcome to Lab 4 of CAD 2131. So today uh, we're going to continue on with our, our project. And uh, so hopefully everybody was able to uh, make, make a pretty good, pretty good attempt at uh, picking some parts. And so I thought, I thought uh, this would be a good time to show you my list. Uh, it's not complete. Uh, there's obviously going to be more stuff uh, that we want to add uh, to this as we go. Uh, but this is uh, generally what we should be seeing. So obviously I gave you the PLC and the power supply. Uh, hopefully you were able to find some buttons. Uh, we're looking for float switches. Uh, they, uh, we're going to need some relays, a uh, contactor. Uh, we're going to need some, uh, some lamps, some fuses, uh, grounding terminal blocks. Uh, something probably a lot of you missed was uh, terminal blocks and the fact that the grounding terminal blocks and the regular terminal blocks are a little bit different. But, uh, you know, have a little search around, see what you can find. Uh, strain relief, a uh, guarantee uh, nobody got that. Um, DIN rail, uh, nobody knows what DIN rail is yet. That's okay. I'm going to explain that here in a minute. The motor we talked about, I gave you a motor. You could use it if you wanted. You could pick something else. Uh, it doesn't really matter. Uh, jumpers for terminal blocks, definitely something that gets missed uh, all the time. And uh, I'll talk about what those are in a second. Uh, but uh, hopefully, uh, if you don't if you don't have everything here, uh, hopefully you have it, most of the stuff. But if you do need to add a few components, uh, that's a great starting point is to uh, go ahead and grab those. Uh, and then uh, we can get into the actual uh, start of the project. All right. Okay. Uh, so here I have, um, basically it's, it's what we're talking about. I have a, this is a different power supply. I'll show you the uh, different power supply. I'll actually show you the, the actual power supply that I chose later. Uh, but this is the little PLC. Uh, we have a few components here that, that are similar. Uh, we have a, a circuit breaker. We don't have one of those, uh, in our, in our design, we have some fuses. Uh, but we do have terminal blocks, and if you look closely, you can see uh, that we have uh, some little jumpers that jump across these terminal blocks, and we also have some labels uh, to help us uh, identify uh, what we have. And this is all sitting on something called a DIN rail. And so this is a, a German standard uh, that they came out with some time ago, and it's really, really quite handy. Uh, because your components will basically uh, just snap on uh, to to the to this din rail. So uh, there you go. So uh, we just take our din rail and slide it over and snap it in, and we're good to go. Uh, these uh, these little PLCs they're called uh, click because you can see they click together uh, quite nicely. So I want to add a module to it. I simply uh, add add the new piece and pop it in, and it connects uh, via a a bus here on the side. Definitely not something unique to uh, Coyo and the Click system, uh, but uh, quite handy. And we'll we'll take a look inside one later. Uh, you will be surprised how familiar all the componentry looks inside uh, from uh, from the uh, Proteus portion. Of, of our class, all right? Okay, the uh, power supply that we actually chose, this is the bad boy here. And, uh, you know, it's very handy for me because I have uh, components laying around. It's, you know, one of the, one of the, uh, one of the problems with being in this industry is it's uh, very easy for us to accumulate uh, stuff uh, that's laying around that, I didn't get utilized in past projects or was for a project that got canceled. Um, so here, here's a contactor. Notice that this contactor is uh, quite a bit more substantial than this relay. Uh, so relays are usually for signals and contactors are for uh, motors. And so when it pulls in, it, it, it seriously pulls in and we have a thermal overload here, uh, which is, uh, you know, we, we can set the thermal overload to whatever, whatever we want. And so this is a really great way to uh, protect our, our investment. You saw how expensive motors can be. Uh, if we do have a, a stall or a failure, 
we do want to protect the system as, as efficiently as possible. Okay, uh, next I have up uh, some parts here. Uh, so this is a base for the, the, uh, the relay. Okay, they, these are handy because then we can just uh, slide them in. And here you can see I have, have another uh, terminal block uh, jumper here. And I have two four written on here for uh, 24 volts. And the other one is obviously for zero volts, but I've borrowed the, uh, the connector. And uh, this is actually a ground uh, terminal block. And if you can see down the side here, it literally will bite into the DIN rail to make sure that we have a good ground. Fuse holder. Okay, so as promised, we have a fuse holder. This is what the fuse holders look like. And the idea is that you can put a bus fuse, so one of the little glass uh, guys in, in the holder here, and slide it around and lock it in. And again, DIN rail mounted. Buttons. So we talked about having an emergency stop button. Here's one. Uh, this one is a, a twist to unlock. And so this mounts into our panel uh, like so. So we drill a 22 millimeter hole or use a knockout and uh, slide this in and it locks in place. So when it's depressed, the emergency stop is activated. We give it a, a, a twist and, uh, and it comes back out. On the back of it uh, goes one of these switches. Now these switches are uh, really, really uh, handy, fairly low tech. Uh, basically when it's pushed, uh, in this case, the red one is normally closed. It opens, wires feed in the side. And when we want to install one, uh, they will, uh, basically the two little detents here match up and you can screw it in, uh, like so, preferably all the way. And you can stack these. So I could have several contacts on the way down and I could have normally open and normally closed mixed together. So uh, this is a really great system where we can, we can build a switch to what our needs are. Okay, so I have uh, three more relays to, uh, to just point out. Uh, this is called an ice cube relay as well. Uh, it is a based uh, very similar to the little one that I was showing you, uh, but a little bit, a little bit heavier construction. Okay. And uh, one thing to be aware of with these is to watch the ratings for not only the coil voltage, uh, but the contacts. Okay. So that's, that's a mechanical one. Then I have a solid state relay. So here's, here's a solid state relay. These are, these are great, uh, for, uh, especially things where you're going to be uh, switching them. Uh, this happens to be a, uh, yeah. So this is, this is a DC input, uh, and it has a triac. So it's, it's rated for, uh, AC voltage on the, on the, uh, on the, on the, uh, output, uh, really handy. They don't suffer from a lot of the mechanical failures that we get with mechanical relays that are going to be turning on and off frequently. Uh, but they are, uh, very sensitive to, to heat. And so do pay attention to the D rating. Okay. On, on here. And, uh, you also need to, to give it some space because it does generate heat. And so speaking of heat, uh, when our current gets up a little bit higher, uh, there is a big brother to it. Okay. And so this is, uh, basically a giant heat sink with a, with a triac, uh, attached to it. And so again, we have our input and our output and, uh, fairly, fairly straightforward. Um, again, I do pay attention to the D rating on it. It's something that you must be aware of. And so if you wanted to use a uh, solid state for, for this design, it probably wouldn't be your uh, best option because again, uh, we have to be aware that uh, triax only switch AC. Okay. So you would need a transistor output in order to, to make any of our DC logic work. All right. Now, uh, if, if you do have an application where uh, safety is an issue, uh, there are also safety relays. Okay. So this is a safety relay and I'm definitely not going to get into too much with this. Uh, these are relatively expensive, but, uh, do save, uh, fingers and or lives. Okay. So, uh, when required, definitely, uh, don't shy away from spending the money on a safety relay. Okay. So, uh, now that we kind of sort of have an idea of what some of these parts 
look like in real life. Uh, let's take a look at them virtually. Okay. And here you can see I've created a bit of a layout. This is, uh, we're jumping ahead a few weeks here uh, for this image. But the idea is that we're going to today uh, start bringing in some of these parts and we can do, a, I'm going to call it a dry layout. Okay. So let me, let me fire up my AutoCAD here and we'll, we'll take a look at uh, what, what we, what we want to do today. All right. So far we've uh, created this nice little schematic. Uh, we've got our uh, pump uh, sort of uh, pictograph. We've got our uh, mains, we've got our, our uh, logic diagram and we need to, uh, we need to actually start to uh, pull some parts in and start to really lay this thing out. And so here we go. I've uh, pulled in my parts and you don't need to have them too awfully accurate yet. We're, we're kind of just looking for uh, how do these fit together? And so what I've done is I've, I've broken this down into, into little subsections. So obviously the uh, motor contactor and the thermal overload, uh, they become a unit. And so what I did was I grouped them together. Okay. Uh, then I, then I took a look at how, how I wanted to, um, to, to lay out the, uh, the terminal blocks. And so, uh, laying them out individually, uh, can be, can be problematic, but obviously things like the grounds, I need the grounds together. And so, uh, you can group them together. And then as, as you, as you move that out in our design, uh, we will uh, continue to group things accordingly, but don't, don't get too awfully stressed about it yet. What I'm looking for this week is for you to start to, uh, just bring in all the parts and get a feel for how it's going to, to get, uh, assembled. And, and really we're talking, we're talking rough, rough, rough. Okay. Uh, I, I want. I want, I want a gut feel sort of, yeah, I need a box that's going to be this big and this is kind of how I'm going to lay it out. And there is a bit of logic to, to how this is laid out. And, uh, I'm not saying that this is the way or the best way to do it. Uh, but it's just how I chose to do it the other day. And so uh, basically what, what my thinking is, is that my, my high voltage is going to come in here. Uh, we're going to do our control and, and what have you, uh, up front here. So obviously I've got my, my terminal blocks for the ground, uh, my mains, uh, coming in here, my fuses, and then my, uh, power supply. So I'm knocking it down to 24 volts, which I can then run around to the rest of my circuitry. So my PLC is running on 24 volts my two relays and all of the terminal blocks that are going off to the switches and coming back. One thing that we want to be very aware of is, uh, we did ask, or one of our asks was that we have expandability in the future, uh, for, uh, for a heater. And, and this is kind of tight, but I think we have room up here that we could actually drop in another, another relay. Okay. Um, we're not sure how big this heater is going to be. So it's a little bit ambiguous, but we'll, we'll, we'll consider this uh, a bare minimum at this point. And we can always, uh, because we're dealing with this virtually, uh, we can always add to it. We could say, you know, uh, maybe, maybe we want a 20 amp, uh, contactor to drive this, this, uh, big, big heater. And cause, cause we don't know. Right. And, and what we don't know uh, it's, it's okay because it's virtual at this point. It's only a bit of time and effort as opposed to dollars and cents. So there we go. That's, uh, that's my project, uh, kind of, kind of wrapped up. I don't, I don't want you to copy it. I want you to do this on your own. Uh, but this is an idea of how it's going to start to work out and really personalize this. This is, this is your project to do as you want. We have a couple of weeks to work on this. Uh, so yeah, let's, uh, let's be proactive uh, and hopefully people aren't waiting to the last week, uh, to, 
to get started on these multi-week projects because I know that you have a lot, uh, not just in this class, but uh, your other classes. All right. As always, if you have any questions, comments, suggestions, uh, please uh, feel free to email me. I'm I'm here to to assist in any way possible. So as you know, I'm more than willing to publish uh, some some supplementary videos on anything required or answers answer you uh, directly. All right. Uh, thanks. Have yourself a great week and uh, hey, have fun. All right. Bye now.